Thank you XD for providing the review build of the game. And even though I was given the opportunity, I will still be brutally honest about this game and they also want me to be honest about the game. So that is pretty cool to hear from them. Well, if you don't know who XD is, they made Torchlight Infinite, Flash Party, Sausage Man and the game Reverse Collapse codename Bakery, which is the prequel of the Girls Frontline franchise. And it was a pretty fun game and I also reviewed that one. So if you want to check it out, the link will be in the description box below. And people who bought it told me that they are having a ton of fun playing the game because there are so many contents to tackle. So XD definitely knows what they are doing in making a good game and a fun one. So I also want to say since this is the review build of the game, everything was unlocked for me while well, I was given the choice between a new account or an end game account. So I chose the end game account so everything was unlocked. Let me first introduce you what this game is all about by just looking at the story it's like that we want to make things right by changing the past and yes there are a lot of time traveling aspect on this game and i can guarantee you that this game also took inspiration from persona 5 royale because take a look at this cat and the intonation and the character of this cat is very similar to Morgana from Persona 5 Royale. And not just the cat, the tarot cards too. The story is also quite mature because there are killing and this is like a war between factions or something like that. It is actually really awesome to see this cute chibi anime art style but has a very mature story. So really really unique and cool. The game has quite a bit of a story, there are going to be 6 chapters in the game as of right now and being that this is a live service game, they will probably add more story into the game later on and more rewards. Now I wanna touch on the visuals and performance first of this game. Graphics and the art style of this game is amazing even though you get what you see but just take a look at this beautiful beautiful artwork and man th the artwork is just top notch in this game. When you get into the gameplay, you have this Octopath Traveler art style, which is really nice. I think now they call it 2D HD Remake Remastered, I don't know man, it's something like that. And performance wise, you will have no problem playing this game on your potato PC. Take a look at this, it is so not demanding, even when you are gonna play it on your phone, your phone will not have a hard time playing this game. Well yeah, it's gonna be released in mobile too, so yeah, pretty cool. So let's talk about the gameplay, it is a great turn based RPG, same like this Gaia or Fire Emblem Heroes. Here you can knock people off the map, so you basically one shot them, which is really nice and the typical backstab system where you deal more damage if you damage your enemy from the back or from the side. Uh, there are three main modes in this game, the Fool's Journey is basically the story mode of the game. Uh, the next one we have Crossing Worlds, basically the daily dungeons where we can obtain level up materials or end resources in this game. And the last but not the least is Spiral of Destinies. It's like the story mode but you alter the story's timeline. So it's like a side story and it is quite long and you get to upgrade your characters in that story alone. I mean the story has the story alone has some unique gimmicks here and there. So that is really cool to see. So your setup in this story is actually different from your usual setup for like daily dungeons, uh, main story, event dungeons, like that. So to put it simply, it's like a roguelike system implemented a bit on these side stories. And I gotta say, man, I love it. It is story driven. The gameplay is nice. You get to pick and choose and strategize your setup. It's really unique. And it is. I think it is something new in a gacha game. I know, well, Honkai style has it, but, but this one, trust me, it's different than, you know, Honkai Star Wars or even Zenless Zone Zero's roguelike system that is implement or like roguelike dungeon that is implemented on their game. And we also have event dungeons, obviously, but yeah. In this game, there are gonna be 67 characters in total at release and everyone plays differently from each other, which is really cool to see. 
To upgrade your heroes is by using a fragment system and of course your simple level up uh, currencies and equipment too. So fragments is just to upgrade or rank up your characters so you have a more unique passive same like when you play Honkai Star Rail. When you obtain a dupe uh, you get to upgrade your main character so that's basically it. So fragments can be obtained in a dungeon but it's only once a day and what you get is really minimal like maybe two or four fragments for each characters. And the dungeon also consumes stamina, or if you want more of the fragments, you can get it through summoning which of course requires money and not to mention, it is a gacha. What I also love about this game is after you level up your heroes, you have this thing called rank up, uh, and after you rank up your heroes, you can choose which path of skills you want to take. Basically a skill tree, right? But in this case, it is really flexible. And what I mean by this is that the hero you are upgrading can be a DPS or a debuffer in like one specific hero. They also can be a single target DPS or even an AoE DPS because you get to choose what skills you want to get for that hero. So you will have a lot of options or builds for your party and what suits you the best, man, it is really awesome to see this implemented in the game. So honestly, gameplay-wise, in that aspect of flexibility of builds and everything, I don't really have much complaint about it. But here's the next part of the game. Basically, the things that I don't like is that the auto feature in this game, like the auto gameplay doesn't really stay as is. So after you turn it on, and then you finish the dungeon, and when you go into the next dungeon, you still have to press the auto combat again. It's kind of annoying because let's be honest here, it is a gacha game and you always play gacha games auto most of the time, right? And this game, it doesn't have auto repeat even since the beginning of this game which sucks because this is a gacha game. Instead, they give us this sweep mechanics or sweep system, sorry about that. So basically just click a button and they will automatically load and auto repeat the dungeon for you. But you need a sweep ticket to do so. And sweep tickets are in a purchase, so yeah, I don't like that at all. Now, there are two types of sweep in this game. The usual sweep and the continue sweep. That requires you to wait for a certain amount of time, like 3 hours or something, after using the sweep, the continue sweep. Which is not nice in my opinion, because in that 3 hours, you will get the same amount of rewards if you sweep normally using the sweep ticket. Yes. This continue sweep is free, but it does take your time. Man, just give us auto repeat dungeons because this is a gacha game and you will always auto these type of games. So please implement that system or you know, just give us both. I, I, I just want a normal auto repeat dungeon so we can grind and finish our daily dungeons or you know, daily missions. I do think that the reason why they want to make it like this is because of Genshin Impact or Zenless Zone Zero where you don't have auto repeat button so people are quote unquote engaged with the game. But come on man, this is an auto play game and a grindy one at that. We need auto repeat dungeon again to complete our daily dungeons and stamina or even missions. And to add to that, there are no multiply rewards by using more stamina like in Honkai Star Rail or even Zenless Zone Zero. It's really, really lacking. And speaking of lacking, quality of life feature is also lacking in this game. But first, they have this nice feature called Backtrack. Now, I really do love this uh, feature because if you fail your dungeon, you can choose to backtrack like you know, repeat your previous turns because you made some mistakes along the way and you can backtrack it any turns in this dungeon. This is really awesome because you don't have to repeat the dungeon every time you made a mistake. So yeah, please, more more gacha games or more any 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 turn-based games should probably implement this system or this feature because it is really really good. After that, there is nothing. Like in many gacha games, upgrading equipment, you can just click one button and they will add the XP required for that upgrade. In this game, that feature is not here. Like, it is the simplest quality of life gacha game feature, but I don't know why they don't put it in the game. I really do hope they add it because this is mandatory since we will get the equipment at random and we need to upgrade a lot of equipment in this game. Since, you know, gacha games, equipments, they are all based on RNG and we need to grind a lot more. 
And that is also why we need Auto Repeat Dungeon. Please! Now, I know this is a live service game and some things are gonna change and improve, but I don't know how to feel about this kind of things, you know, the lack of features at launch. Now, I kinda sound pretty negative right about now, but please try this game yourself, it is really good though. Like, I also want this game to succeed because just take a look at the art style and the artwork of this game, it is beauty on its own and the gameplay isn't that bad either but please give us a good quality of life feature and try to make it less grindy for the hero fragments and i think we are and i think this game is gonna be so fucking good i mean i am always craving for an hd 2d game and um, especially in a gacha game because i am actually pretty bored of you know the Genshin Impact art style of games like yeah, Wood Ring Waves, uh, Zenless Zone Zero. I know Zenless Zone Zero has a more different art style, which is really nice. I actually like Zenless Zone Zero's art style because it is quite different from the other gacha games. But there's nothing else. Like if you take a look at this, like Punishing Grey Raven, Aether Gazer, everything looks the same. And this is something different. And I really want this kind of games to succeed. Because I want more games like this. And I wanna touch the music in this game. The music in this game is awesome. It has the composer of Final Fantasy Tactics. And man, I gotta tell you, this music, the the soundtrack in this game, it really does remind me a lot of Final Fantasy Tactics. And I love that game very much. If there is gonna be a Final Fantasy Tactics remake, I'm gonna fucking get that. And the voice acting is also pretty good, even in combat. Well, in, well, in combat, it can get quite repetitive, but it is actually pretty good. So I have no complaint about that. And surprisingly, the voice actors in this game are all pretty famous. And one of them is Uemura Yuto, who voiced Shinki in Boruto and Motoya in Haikyuu. So that is really cool. And they all do a pretty good job at voice acting each individual characters. And the sound effects are also pretty good. It doesn't sound compressed, everything is clear from the sword clashing and slashing and even punching the enemies, everything feels very impactful. So no complaint in the audio department but I really do hope that they add English voice acting. Yeah, I want a good English voice dubbing. Because I think if any games that has a good English voice acting, man it is more superior than Japanese voice acting man, I kid you not. And I'm sorry if I do offend a lot of Japanese voice acting fans, but that's my opinion. Just take a look at that Final Fantasy VII Remake, man. God damn, and even Spider-Man. Yuri did a good job in making Spider-Man feel alive, yeah. So overall, this game is not bad, but being this a, a live service game, I cannot say anything for sure. Because some things are gonna be improved and maybe even changed entirely. But I will only tell you my experience playing this game as of right now. So, overall, this is a beautiful game. Presentation-wise, the gameplay is not bad either. You have a lot of system implemented to the game like backstab, skills on each individual characters which can be very flexible for each build that you want. And every build has their own personality. But the lack of quality of life features and a quite stingy resources for upgrading heroes are kind of a downer for me. Again, I also reviewed this game with the review build they gave me and with everything unlocked, so I don't know for sure how free to play friendly this game is. With that being said, this game is a free to play game, you don't have to spend a single dime on this game, just try it yourself and if you don't like it, you can always skip the game and if you wanna play this game, Keep this in mind, note to yourself that playing a gacha game is like a marathon, not a sprint. So take your time and be patient if you want to play this game. And hey, maybe this game suits you, but please proceed with caution because that gacha game mechanic man, it is to abuse your mental stability. So if you don't have the power to hold yourself from spending a lot of money or you have a gambling addiction, stay away from these kind of games.